G'day, how you going? Ian Apples here, acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my live video. I want to show you in this art lesson what a beginner can do. It's quite simple and effective. So get on over here and let me show you what I'm going to do, all right? So here's my horizon area. It's quite up high because we're going to have a beautiful, simple sun setting sky and a bit of a lake or a swamp with a boat docked in the corner here. So come on down to the palette. I'll just move my coffee. All right, so I'm going to grab it and put it on a brush. I will dampen it a bit and dry it. All right, I've dampened my brush and I'm going to laden it with some of this soft titanium white. And I just want to prime in the sky area for now. So back up here, got 22 people watching. Don't be shy to say g'day and hello and where you're from. Now, this is simply, no retarder in this, this is simply going to prime in the area so my paints will move across the canvas and they won't be dry and chalky. I do have a bit of blending to do here, but I'm going to be quite swift with it. If you're going to take your time, you can add a bit of retarder into that. And you know what? Just to be clever because I've got it, there's some retarder there, not too much. I'm just going to put some of that in the brush. Not many colours in this painting, not many colours at all. And I've got a little bit of retarder in that just to keep it wet longer. It retards the drying time, meaning to slow down the drying time. Now I'm coming to the tip of that brush and I am getting that to a nice thin, even film right there. See, the, the tip of that brush has got no paint on it. It's been all pushed back there. Now what I want to do is wipe that. So I've got my kitchen towel here and I just simply wipe all the bolt off that. And now our sky colour. So I want to go for Australian sienna and yellow ochre. So we'll come back down here where you can see me fridging around. I've got to try and find all the bits and bobs. There's me Australian sienna, yellow ochre. I might have some Indian yellow and some raw sienna. Is it raw sienna? No, burnt sienna. I'll put that over there. And, um, yeah, so I want to do the... Australian sienna first. Now, if you don't have Australian sienna, just use some deep orange just to get yourself that deep, dusky look in the sky. So I'm going to go with that for now. Let's just see. When that match mixes with the white, a lot of magic starts to happen. So I'm going to get this and paint my whole sky with this for now. G'day, Barry, channel member, and Celeste Watson, a couple of channel members there. Celeste is in Charlotte. Oh, no, she's saying hi to Sh Charlotte, watching from Covington. And we got Barry Radburn. He's all the way in northwestern Australia, Geraldton up there. All right. Now, we're going to get this. I'll just start at the top here. Look at that. It's like a um, honeycomb colour. I damn well love it. I nearly swore then, but I didn't. There we go. Now, it's on there. Watch what you can do. You're a beginner, but there's things you can do that you don't realise you can do. Watch this. See how I told you before the paint pushed up the brush? See all that paint there? Well, what you do, you go like this, bang, look at that. You've got some darker aspects in there if you want it. It's just there, okay? Now, I wanted, wouldn't mind getting the bottom a little bit darker, so I'm going to bring you down here and pick up some yellow ochre. I'm going to wipe the brush again. Okay. If you want to be a channel member like Barry and Celeste, just hit the join tab, price of a cup of coffee a month, and you're supporting my content. You get big shout outs like they do in me lives. So once again, welcome Barry and Celeste. All right, let's see if I can kind of darken up some bits See, I'm put, stamping it on like this because I can get it to go on and then I can brush it in. If I just brushed it, I might mish and mishmash it all together. So I want to kind of just get that flavoured into the sky just like that. I'm liking it. I am liking it. There's my sky colour. So I'm just going to grab some titanium white and another flat brush. Or I can even use a fan brush got a mongoose fan brush it's a bit softer than a hog bristle and you pretty much where I want the glare coming I'm going to use this 
one. So come back over here. I want my sun about here. So I just want to spider out some spectacular glaring stuff like that. I'll put it down. Grab a blending brush and obviously a towel to constantly wipe your blend, okay? Uh, I'm gonna, I always start with stamping. Now, stop, bang, you've got a lot on your brush, you've got to wipe it off. If you don't, you're just going to mash it all over the place. And I want to tassel that out there and just let it finger itself out into that colour there and disappear. And it's making some controlled, quite lovely and beautiful highlights there or brighter values there. I want to get some more now. I want some more of it because there's just not quite enough. Uh, where else can we go? Somewhere here, again, a bit more longer out there. That's it. I'll sit that in the water. And watch what I do. I'm just taking my time and dancing that into the sky. Now, that white is going to allow my Indian yellow, when I sit it on there, to dance the way I want it to dance. This might look mumble-jumble to someone at the moment, but once the actual painting's finished... You get to see, oh, yeah, I like that. I reckon I can do that. If you can't do it straight away, that's fine. You need practice. Okay, so we've got this white, glary stuff going on there. Okay. Now, we want to get the sun in there, so we'll grab a pouncer and get the right pouncer for your sun. So I want, let's say, where's that size there? I reckon that size there is a good enough size diameter. So I'm going to start with a white base for the sun. So I'll simply put that on there like that. Now, because it's a pouncer, you can get a ridge of paint right on the edge. So what I like to do is just go like that to get that off there, okay? So you've got nothing riding on the edge. Now, I want this about this high in the sky. So I'm going to put it on, turn it, just so I'll get a nice white glare. Come on, white. Let's go a bit more. Is that camera close enough? Let's get closer. Let's go again. I don't want to dry the sky yet because I've got to do some more clouds. This one here, the burnt sienna. Get some of that over there. And oh, I'm looking at my coffee. I need a mouthful of that. Hang on a minute. Oh, yeah, that was good. All right. Uh, a brush to stamp on these clouds. Um, where are we? Where are we? I want some... All right, so we'll start with that. I'm going to grab this filbert brush out of the water and I'm going to start with that. So i am washed it and I'm drying it because I don't want it too damp where it makes the paint watermarky. And I want to get some of this. Let me see up here. Okay. Now, my sky is wet. Now, because we've got a sun-setting sky, the clouds are more or less in silhouette, Okay. Uh, I want to get something dancing along here. Watch this. I'm going to do this fluffy movement, okay? Like a, a roundness. And I'm, let's say I'm hitting it at the 12 o'clock position and coming off at the 3 o'clock position. But I'm trying to – I'll just establish them first roughly like this. So it's going to look a bit nonsensy for now until I get the actual shape. So I want a nice open bit coming there and then dancing in front of that sun there. Coming here like so. So many ways you can do clouds. This is way, way different to what I'm normally doing. Now what I'm doing, I'm going to start pushing this colour into there. There we go. Into there. The sky colour is wet. And I'm going to grab a blending brush and watch. This is where the magic happens. I hope, I hope. I want to do the same now. I want to start. Is your camera close enough? 
Look at that. It looks cartoony, mumbly jumbly. Let's start controlling that now. Let's get the, I always start at the tops of my clouds. Now the bottom I want to turmoil, twist, get different vibes of it, brighter and darker values of it. We're going to do a few different passes and get some lighter colours in here as well. I want that nice and sharp out there. So I'm controlling that coming down here. Tickle that up a bit. Coming across. Now the bottom I want to kind of break down and blend into there. And we're going to keep on doing this and adding yumminess and highlights to it till it looks great. Now I just want to get some over here. So I'm just going to quickly put some of this there and I'm going to quickly blend it because I feel that paint over there is getting quite dry. I should have put more retarder in it. I thought I wouldn't have needed any, but it's quite a dry day here today. I'm going to simply wash that filbert brush off camera here, get all that brown out of it. And I want to grab some of the titanium white out of the tube, the good stuff. I call it the good stuff because it's got plenty of grunt in it. Now, getting some of this on my brush. Now, I want to try and that paint's still a bit wet. I want to try and grab another blending brush. I've got lots here. It's good to have a lot of blending brushes. I need them for when I'm painting live, so I'm not constantly stopping and washing them. Now this is going to highlight my clouds. Where are we? Right in front of that now. And it's like adding the yumminess. Where's that good stuff? Now don't be shy to hit the like button. I'll stop about over here somewhere and share it to your social media. If someone can share this to my art group page, it'll be much appreciated. They can do it right now. I was going to do it, but I am got caught up painting <laughs> as I am. Where are we? A bit more here. And then I'll just darken up the bottom. Grab some white. And just over here, get some cloud vibes happening here too bright so I'm going to push it down into the sky there we go push it off into the sky ah, where are we pushing it back into the sky just with this brush any brush can blend even your fingers can blend look at this see a bit of Bit of blending there. Get rid of some of this pooiness out of there. It's very pooey looking, isn't it? There we go. Now we're going to mask up the I see me pencil line. My horizon goes all the way across the painting, so I know where it is all the time. I'm doing that from now on. It's quite a good thing to do and of course I do a second one so I don't get that ridge of paint there because this is going to be painted up with the craft white as well so I'll put you down here get some of this wet the brush I better get back to the live show, otherwise I won't know what's going on. All right, now, we're going to simply prime in the bottom water. Look how much is on my brush, my goodness.
get it all on there, get it to the tape. Stroke it left and right like a pure gentleman that I am, or well, I try to be. There we go. Nice, thin, even film. Now I'll take that. Now see that second layer of tape? See what it's done? It's allowed a gap between the white paint and the actual tape when I paint the horizon line. I'll give that just a bit of a smear just to get rid of any ridge of paint that might be there. That's it. Okay. Now the main colour of the water is the... Where are we? Where's our colours there? I'm going to go for the Australian Sienna. Come back down here, get more Australian Sienna. I'm just going to mystify all them so they don't go too hard in case I need them. And we'll get the water just brushed in. Right against that tape, brush it all in. Now this is going to be the base of the water. It's clashing with the sky at the moment, but we're going to change it up severely. This is just to get the highlights in the water, all this is. It's a lot of sauce for little spaghetti, but the amount of spaghetti you see at the end is going to be fascinating to look at. I wouldn't mind a little bit of um, yellow ochre, so I'm just putting some yellow ochre into, onto the palette here and getting some of this. Now I want to grab some of this burnt sienna and mix with it just to dark light that a bit, both sides of the brush because I'm going to flip flop it onto the canvas. And I want to start from the bottom and bring that, there we go, I'll even get a bit more of that there. See how that white paint's allowing all this to slide across the canvas? I've got to grab another pouncer. That's about the same size, isn't it? Yeah. Where did that... Well, here it is, the white paint go. Now, I want to show you something with the sun. My sun's there. I've got to do it in a straight line, but I just want it to stop. I don't want to come all the way down, so I'll start from the tape there. And I'm just going to do this in a straight line to about there and pull it off. I pulled it off, so hopefully the bottom is kind of like that. That's just there for reference for later on, okay? We're going to get that to happen. Now, we want a dark, bits of dark stuff going on out there. So we'll come back down to the palette. I'm going to need a flat brush. So come back down here. I can get rid of that. Uh, what do we want? Dioxine purple. So I'm going to use dioxine purple and a little bit of, get a flat brush, uh, petithophalo blue, which is phalo blue. All right, so getting that there. Okay, I've just dried across there. I'm doing more dioxine in this phalo blue than what it is phalo blue. I'll grab me straight edge stick, or me bullshit stick. And I just want to rest this on there and start coming across. Get that there. Where are we? Where's the bottom of my tape? Somewhere there. Because this water is going to be made up of different coloured bands, which is going to give it the illusion of such a decent sunset. If little buddy was here, he'd be telling me to take the tape off right now. Right, let's take it off. Hopefully there's no white ridge of paint there. Perfect. There's no white ridge of paint there, okay? So now we can, because I don't want that to be like a factory edge there where it looks like that. I want it just gently, if iffity-affity up there, just gently just destroying that factory edge that we created with the tape. I'll grab the mouse stick. Let's 
Getting rid of that edge. Get rid of it. There you go. Come on, come on. There we go. You can see those bits there. You don't want it looking like that. You want to destroy all that. There we go. Too easy. You can do it. If you can't practice, then you can. And that's a good philosophy. Yeah, you can do it. If you can't practice, then you can. All right. See, I'm painting live. I'm getting to the point. But really, you can add the minutest little bits of highlights into that as well just to give it some more pizzazz. Now, we want this colour down here on the palette. We want that with a bit of brightness. So I'm going to add a bit more of that. And let's see if this is going to do it. Yeah. And look at that now. It's got a lot of paint on there ready to control where you want it. Now we can also add a bit of water to this. Now we might have to try the rest of the water. We'll see how we go. Going to grab me straight edge stick and I want some bands now right across here. Nice thin bit right in between there. And I'm going to like Cross bonding is like bricks. Bricks are cross bonded like that. I call that cross bonding. If anything, my brush strokes are going to be slightly cross bonded. Keeping it straight all the way across. Watch. Break it up. Tilt your brush up. Take your time. If you sense and feel that I'm rushing, don't you do it. I'm just doing it because I've got the camera going and it is a little bit on the stressful side, but bearable just to get things done before something wrong happens or the camera overheats or it shuts down. It has happened to me before and it's very trust frustrating for me and the viewer when that happens. So hence the rushness in your voice now just remember all my youtube tutorial paintings are for sale message me like david heller did he just bought two paintings of mine so they'll be in the post to him tomorrow now i'm going to quickly do another band you can see what's happening here Just a gap there like that. Now I'll just get that fixed there. And we want a nice big, watch this straight line. See what this bullshit stick does? It does all that for you. And this is just that movement on top of the water. Let's see if we can go this way as well. I might need my stick. And you can always fine tune it by putting some of the orange back where there's some big thick blobs that you don't really like the look of. I'm going to get to that um, with another flat. I want to get to, is that a good one? I'm just looking for a good flat. Bear with me a moment. I'll tell you what, I do got to get some more flats. Or I'm going to have to use this one. So I'll give that one a bit of a wash. Because that sun, now we've got to fine tune that. See the glare in the water there? I'll come head on just so you get a vibe of it. But we, we need to fix this now. So what I'm going to do is grab the white and Indian yellow. So I'll get that onto the palette first. Now we've got the white there. We're going to grab the... Still loose. <clears throat> and Indian yellow. There we go. Let me see what colour that is. Needs to be a bit deeper. 
Indian yellow I got here is very see-throughy, transparent. That's it. That's all right. So what I'd like to do now, why I use that pouncer, that's given me the area where to get this now. So I'm going to jingle and jangle and then start radiating it, giving it a more of a, a spliced edge there. And you just want to follow that smudge that you did with the pouncer. I got it reasonably solid there. And then I filter some bits out, just like so. And all in all, when it's finished, a little bit in between there, it'll look quite dandy, I suppose. Can I have a look in there? Yeah. Now, see here? Look at that. I've got to distort that as well. And backwards and forwards with the blue and whatnot. Just really open the last bits of this up. Some just on their own. Just like that. Can I have a look at that? It's a little bit, yeah, there's a little bit too straight there. Let me get that. And that's what, why it pays to analyse all your work. Got all that done. What I'll do is I'll grab some black. <coughs> oh, you had a hard night, that black. And some burnt umber. I'll come down here so you're not bored. I love mixing black and burnt umber. I don't know why, but I do. I've got that black brush. Doom. Now, I don't want it to be pure black, so I like to just blackulate that burn umber just so it's got a bit of otherness in there. Otherness. Now, let's hope I can freehand a boat. I'll make a traceable for this boat if you want to add it. I want to come along down a little bit and scoot up. Scoot up just on the slightest. You know what other brush I need for this as well, which I saw, is me. Hang on, let me wipe all that off there. Me dagger brush. That's good for doing this sort of stuff as well. And we just want to get a silhouette of a boat. There, come all the way along here. Now I'll use that. Oh, goodness me. Use this one to block it in. Joys of painting, eh? Yeah. I could probably film this a lot better and edit it together, but. Some people need a live, don't they? Celeste Watson's liking it so far. Who else is liking it? Yes, no, you can tell me if it's not. I don't mind. I can handle the truth. If that is the truth. Now, the we're going to have... The shadow line's going to be here, but I'm going to bring it back from where I want it, right? Just so as I can get the... Get them straight, these ripply bits coming on an angle like that. See how easy I did that? You can do that. Then you can, hang on, get this a bit coloured there as well. There we go. the 
other brush, block it in. These little shadowy things just add so much coin to your painting. What I mean by that is extra value. It makes people really want to buy it. And like I said, yeah, all my YouTube videos, the paintings are available for sale, ones that aren't already been sold. So don't be shy to message me. Now we'll get a bit of a rope probably here. Big thick rope. Get it a bit decent than that, Ian. I'll fix that up later. All right. And now we want to get this. <laughs> Zigzagged into the water. Just like so. There, that looks. See those, those zigzags; they do all the, um, all the, um, the swell that's in the water, the the movement on the surface of the water. Just doing another bit of a rope here. <clears throat> Just give it a bit more pizzazz. This one can come and stretch right out in a bit thinner, but coming down. Because there's, see that, that point and that point, that's where the water is. This has got to come down a bit lower. About there. I think I buggered that one up. And then this one can have the... slightest. How's that looking in the... Yeah, that looks like it. I just buggered that end of the rope up, so I might have to try and fix that up later. And you can have some... Or things sticking out of it. Some kind of a box. Now I'm going to grab just a bit of white with that paint just to see if I can get a bit of a slight something here just something like that and maybe very slight where the boat's in the water see the orange water it looks a bit one-dimensional i'm grabbing the um raw sienna or not the raw sienna grabbing the burnt sienna natural of course And see this orange water here? You need the slightest, let's say on the darker side where the sun isn't. See how we did those blue ripples? We want even smaller ones of these just to break up. The orange, let's get some of that off my brush there. Tone it down a bit, went a bit hard there. Is my camera on there? Yes. I'll fix that up later. Whether I have time to do it on camera or not, I don't know. I want to sign this, then reveal it. So thank you for joining the show and sticking around to the very end. Check out the links in the description box below. There's a few there. There's a PayPal link to buy the brushes I use, the blending brushes, or if you want to buy one of my paintings.
There we go. That's not too shabby. We've got a sunset over a lake of a little fisherman's boat there. And I know you can do it. Well, I had a lot of fun painting that in this live show. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. And if you did, you'd be sure to tell your friends. But if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody. Goodbye, good luck, and good on you.